Welcome to North Haven Voices. My name is Connie Marshall. I am here um, with three amazing women who have been members of North Haven probably collectively for a hundred years, I'm gonna guess, a long, long time. Easily. E easily. These are three of the four original theological threads. And for anybody who has admired the beautiful, beautiful banners that are in our sanctuary, it's because of these three women. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. Laurel, we're gonna start with you. And we're just basically asking, how did Theological Threads get started? John Thornburg had recently come to North Haven. And it, we were in the old building. The church needed a little help. He called on a minister, a, a woman from his former ministry, Ruth Jean Turner, who offered to teach a Saturday workshop on making banners. As I recall, one Saturday morning in January, we went over to her house and she had everything laid out for, to help us start on a very simple banner. We had a great time. The three who knew how to sew picked it up very quickly. <laughs> and the three who were artists picked it up very quickly. But the most fun of all that day was looking for the right fabric to represent the dove. The Holy Spirit was coming down in the form of a dove. Ruth Jean had drawn a beautiful shape. We had the letters, we had the outlining. It was a simple blue and white. Would have gone anywhere, could have been anything. And she kept throwing pieces of fabric out on the table. A shiny one grabbed us. And I promise you, almost all of us looked at that. It was actually what I'm gonna call lame, black and gold spotted. Jan Pibus immediately said, oh, that's a guinea hen, African. And I don't know what, but the rest of us loved it. Because we kept saying, North Haven is different and we'll celebrate the differentness. And we very much wanted to stress that. Secretly, I think we wanted to make our own banner right from the beginning. We did not yeah. want to copy anything. Um, but so that particular day, the Holy Spirit came to us and gave us a speckled dove, which is always one of my favorite banners anyway. And it's it, because it's still the speckled dove and a guinea hen and whatever you want to call it. It is unique. Great. Now, there were originally four of you, correct? I believe Winnie Lynn was one of the four. Unfortunately, Winnie, unfortunately Winnie is not able to be with us. Um, but we, we, um, we wish she could. But, but she no, we didn't. So, Jan, talk about uh, budget and where the materials came from and where money came from to buy materials and all that kind of stuff. You know, I, I blunt out most of that, but uh, I think it was just because we were kind of hitting the missionary barrel for materials. Don't you remember it that way, Carolyn? Yes, but we also had a budget. We had, seemed like $300 a year, and I forget when it started. But uh, we, we used a lot of our own scraps. Yeah. But big yeah. thing, like, we, we did have a budget. Well, we may have had a budget. <laughs> An awful lot of my stash went up there on the walls. <laughs> Definitely, it's no substitute for the stash. But, uh, but I've got uh, going through my stash. I've got uh, things that we bought, that things that the church bought. Vel strips of Velcro. Ah, uh, good. There's another thing coming up. Yes. Well, as you know, I have moved, so it's um, it can, might have gotten com combined, but I, I'll let me know what you need. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Once a, once a scrap seamstress, always a scrap seamstress, I guess. Yeah. Well, Laurel, your job, my understanding was your job was as the person who did all the ironing. Is that correct? It was. You see, each of them had these gifts. Carolyn and Jan and Winnie could sew beautifully. Carolyn and Jan and Winnie knew color and hue and fabric. And they were gracious enough to let me tag along. They were, they were training me. And I was the one that insisted when the time came, we had to go eat lunch. Well, that meant I went <laughs> down to Jason's deli and got lunch. Or I was the one that looked at the calendar because uh, I was ironing. I could iron. But the rest of it, uh, they just were very gracious. And uh, I learned a lot. I really did. It was my first step into art. Wonderful. Wonderful. So I think everybody knows what a banner is, but I'm not sure everybody knows what a paramount is. So Carolyn, could you elaborate a little bit more on what is a paramount? Well, let's see other decorate. I went, uh, since you asked that question, I looked, I went to Google and uh, looked at, and it's the other decorations other than banners, uh, pulpit fall, bookmarks, altar pieces, and, uh, and it applies used in churches, but also in uh, state rooms of state oh. that need, yeah. Interesting. And oh. so you not only did you all do banners, you also did the paramounts as well, like altar oh, cloth yeah. and that kind of thing? Yes. And uh, stoles for the, per the uh, ministers. Stoles. And the choir. Yeah, yeah. And the choir. So a lot of those beautiful pieces of fabric that you see on people hanging, on the altar table are these women right here. So, you know, when I was talking with Jan about this many, many weeks ago, she said that a lot of people have assumed that a lot of those things were ordered from Coke Ferry or from a religious supply house, and they weren't. They were made by the hands of these people right here. So pretty wonderful. So because you were all involved, can you talk about what specific gift do you think that you personally brought to the table. And let me, if I could just call on you uh, one at a time. Jan, Tim, what, what do you think was your particular gift that you brought? And don't be shy. You can brag. Uh, well, I have a good eye. Still have it, mostly. Um, but I think the thing I brought mostly was that I wasn't afraid to step out of the bounds of conventional construction. I would put things together in very odd ways and people who were more used to, uh, Winnie and Carolyn were more used to the, the strict construction ways that produced beautiful clothes and beautiful things. My things were more likely to be done from the backside or something. Uh, I just kind of threw stuff together and, uh, had very little patience with the, the ones who did it right. I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, I, I got better. We, we all worked really hard at learning to work together with different kinds of, of uh, backgrounds and different kinds of uh, inspiration. And it's, it's not easy when you're working closely together with three other women to, uh, Rain, or at least for me, a oh, big mouth here, to rein in my my big mouth and uh, <laughs> try to work with somebody else, and try to try to be tolerant of their carefulness. That was really hard. I'm I'm still slapdash, but <laughs> I think we all did it pretty well, don't you all? Yes. So, Carolyn, what gift do you think you brought? Well, I'm sort of the opposite of Jan. <laughs> I need I need a pattern, and and this is less so than it was. I have learned to accommodate some of Jan's ideas, but I said one time when we both agree on somewhat something should be, it is really good. 
Hmm. When we agree with each other, that's, we've got it. Yeah. Right. So Laurel, besides ironing and picking up lunch, what gift do you think you brought to the table? Um, I don't really know. That was I think you, <laughs> you do have a good eye. As I, I think I don't particularly. I, I, very book learning and, and, uh, you know, Jan will say that the colors go in this order or the pattern is in this order. And I, maybe I see it and maybe it, maybe I believe it, maybe I, but I don't see it. One thing I did do was to pull out the calendar and remind them how many days we had left to do something and the time frame for starting and asking a few questions. Um, but mostly I got to learn a whole lot about stuff. The, um, the application of various pieces on top of each other, hanging the things, and I got on the ladder. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure of that. Well, I think we all those days. Can any of you speak to what you felt like Winnie's um, great strengths were? She could do both. She was a master seamstress. She had been studying art for many years. And in the last few years, you know, she got a degree. Then she started studying with Ann Cushing Gantz. And she told me one time that she could see whether this color needed to be a cool color or a warm color. And I think that, and then perhaps um, stepping back just a little bit, she probably listened more. And so then would kind of see where everyone was going and heard us in that direction. I, I, I'm not gonna say she was the sheep dog. I'm just saying, um, she had all the gifts. It, all three yeah. of these people had had the gifts, you know. And then the working together was just like washing clothes. What? I don't get that. <laughs> well, it was, it. you know, and then it comes out clean. I understood it. Well, <laughs> It's an interesting analogy. We'll, we'll ponder on that. So, so Jan, um, my question for you, because I think there might be a little bit of confusion with some of the people in the church. And, and actually, you set me straight when we talked about this a, a couple of weeks ago. So I'd like you to kind of briefly talk about the difference in the theological threads doing banners and pyramids versus the framed pieces that surround the um, second floor, the framed pieces. Those were not done by theological threads, am I correct? That's correct. Can you talk those, a little bit about how those were, why and how those were created? Uh, back in, I think it was 76, 1976, that the, there was the bicentennial of Methodism or something. And, uh, but it was a bicentennial and the powers that be got together and decided there was a committee and they decided we were going to celebrate it. And so they decided to have a, a juried art show. Well, the only room in the old church that you could do that in was what we called the lecture hall, which was down a long hall with schoolrooms off each side of it. I mean, it was a, a nice room, but it was way the heck down there. And we needed a way to get people to come from the door and turn left and go down this long hall to the art show. So I suggested, well, let's do the, let's do the history of Methodism on, on butcher paper and put it on the wall. And so we have John and Charles Wesley here and just tra traipsing through the history of Methodism. Well, they liked the history of Methodism, but the butcher paper wouldn't work. They, you know, uh -uh, no way. So, we broiled that around a little bit, and uh, that those framed things happened because originally the little funny little tabs at the top had a dowel going through it, and they hung. They were they were little bitty banners, 
all the way down this, both sides of this hall. And uh, every year, Carolyn and I would have to take them down and clean mm. them and get them out of the way so that the, the uh, school could have their Halloween collar, you know, Halloween hoo-ha. And so we got tired of that and they got, you know, they, they kept getting dirtier and dirtier. And so I suggested maybe we pitch them or you and I suggested Carol, I don't remember what, anyway. It was suggested, and what, oh, somebody in the congregation stood up and said, no, we will frame them. I well, I remember credit is due. The Timothy. Hmm? Oh, credit Dr. Dr. Timothy. Yeah. yeah. And she raised some money and she found the framer and everything was great. And while they were at the framers, there was a fire in the framers studio. And four of them were pretty badly singed and had to be redone. And so they aren't quite the same, but uh they're better. I, I I designed, originally, I designed them, and Judy Rory, and I think it was Anna Marie. Well, Anna Marie was the, kept my nose to the grindstone, Anna Marie Harkey. But the, um, Judy Rory, and uh, Kiki Warwick, and I put the kits together and we handed out kits to the congregation. There were 36 different people in the congregation who glued and sewed and stitched and and just made the silly things. And they turned out, I think they turned out really well. I'm so proud of them. I think almost every scrap of fabric came from the uh, throwaway bin at a nice furniture store over in Fort Worth up by TCU called Poindexter's at the time and my dad had office space and in the in the building and so knew the, the owner and he said well I've got a whole cave back here and it was a cave <laughs> I opened the door and it was cut in the side of the hill and there was all the you know upholstery fabrics and samples you know the, the books of samples that we have now it was just amazing so I just gathered them all up and dad and Jim helped me and we loaded up the back of my little, what was it, citation, my little bitty Chevrolet citation. And we just loaded it way up to the gunnels and I just dumped them on <laughs> North Haven and we went from there. Well, for anybody who is at North Haven and I know a lot of people always sit on the ground floor and maybe never venture up to the second floor. If you've not seen these pieces, they are just stunning. So I, I really encourage you to, to go look at them uh, either again or just be sure and see them because they're, they're pretty spectacular. I forgot one important thing. The, the, I knew nothing about the Bible. Nothing. My, it, it wasn't a part of my life until then. And then that was introduced to Albert Outler, who gave me some books and guided me through and wrote most of the, the blurbs that are that go with the things. So that's that's Albert Adler. Great, great. Well, that's wonderful. Well, let's let's switch back now to theological threads. And Carolyn, I've done a little detective work, and I understand that you used to actually research liturgical colors. So can you talk a little bit about that? About how you learned about liturgical colors. I don't think I would call it researching. I think, uh, you know, teaching uh, elementary Sunday school, we, we studied, we talked about liturgical colors. And that was it, huh? That was, that was, uh, that well, was it. it was, it was very important to Carolyn and thus to us to understand the difference between the light purple for Lent oh. and the purple for Advent. And, you know, it's still one of my favorite things to see the changing colors. Yeah. And um, to, to know that, that everywhere in the church, that means Advent or that means Lent. It, it's just well, neat. I, I was brought up in, as a Catholic, so I was really into the colors and uh so 
I was right with Carolyn on, on the color thing. I, I still am. I, mm -hmm. yeah. The one thing I've retained, <laughs> the well, love of the seasonal colors. Well, we're unfortunately getting to the end of, of, our, of our interview. It's been wonderful. But what I would love to close with is I would love each of you to maybe share one really special tender moment or funny moment or just a poignant moment or something that you remember just so vividly about the theological thread. So again, if I might call on you by name, Carolyn, you go first. What, what do you have as uh, something that you remember? Well, I don't know about poignant moment. My favorite thing that we made, worked on together, I think was the, the banners for Lloyd Fouch and Jane Marshall for their, uh, their um, honoring concert. Uh, and and we each, each one had, we were sitting this, Choir was part of it too, and the choir sang s six pieces from each composer, each of these two, and so we represented these these six pieces on a banner uh, for each of them. Of them, and working together and uh, on representing these these hymns with pictorially. It was, it was growing and uh, it was a lot of fun. Great. Laurel, what do you have? Well, there would be mornings we would come in and we weren't so sure mm -hmm. just where we were going. And I don't know if it was Winnie or Carolyn and said, well, let's sit down a minute and let's pray. And we never said a whole lot of words. We just sat and bowed our heads and thought. And then shortly thereafter, a, an example or whatever it was we wanted to do would come up. Or we'd go home and say, sleep on it. And the next morning, we'd have the solution. And it was always down to the Holy Spirit. There were a lot of things that were on those banners that were the Holy Spirit. A lot. Most. But supposed to be or not, we just moved in that in God's mysterious way. Mm -hmm. And that, that warms my heart now. That's great. Yeah. And Jan, what about you? I don't have one particular one. I, I do remember one thing about the last banner that, that Winnie had anything to do with. We were on the in the bell room floor, both of us. These two <clears throat> women, mature, they, mature, mature yeah, women, rolling down around the floor and, and uh, working on this crazy banner. And the both, two of them, because now we were in the big in the new church, and we have to have to do two of everything. And it was just <laughs> still good. so. But she and I would work together, and, and I said, "Well, do you mind if I strengthen the binds?" She had done these gorgeous grapes, this beautiful, beautiful. We were doing the thing about the, I am the vine and you are the grapes or whatever it is. And um, I don't remember what it is. And it had a beautiful green border and these beautiful grapes, but the, the lines you couldn't see. And she said, well, what are you gonna use? Shoestrings? And, and I said, no, I'm gonna use a marker. Do you mind? And she cringed and, no, go ahead. So I just butted out the, you know, made the vines a little bigger. And uh, we can't find those banners now. I'm just sick because they were so pretty. She had, she had done the grapes in, in different fabrics and, and uh, you know, aug augmented the fabrics with paint and then, you know, attached them. They, it was a beautiful, they were beautiful. Are there, are there other banners missing? And oh, where, yeah. Where, yeah. Where, where are they? Where could they have been? Uh, we don't know. Uh, they were maybe uh, uh, over the years we've uh, winnowed them. You all remember some went to the prison, and I had a friend who was helping start a little church in New Mexico, and and some of them went up out there, and 
I think two went out there. And so we had a lot of them and I don't know, I, I have hesitated to ask uh, Stephanie, but some of them are just gone. Yeah, hmm. I think they were gone before Stephanie. But, and we should mention that the first banners for North Haven were made by Joyce Ogden. Mm-hmm. Hubert and Ogden. Those, the ones that you made wider. The Linton banners uh -huh. are hers. They're purple. The right purple. The right purple. <laughs> then when we had to move them into the new building, they needed more presence. So we backed them with some orange fabric I had. I'd been saving it for a bedspread or something. And then Jeanette Crawford wove an exquisite tapestry, uh, a pyramid coming down from the pulpit that matched the colors. And it's a, her most beautiful work. It's one of the pieces that she's always been really happy with. It's so, modeled, the, the scene is modeled from the view from their, their uh, New Mexico cabin. Yeah, I drew the cartoon for that one off a picture. <laughs> well, was great. you know, we, many of us, all of us would agree that North Haven is blessed with so many incredible creative artist people that this just surrounds us everywhere. But, you know, for I, I'm going to throw this out there for members of the church, visitors in the church. Whenever we get back together, whenever that glorious day will be when we're back together again, when you see these three ladies, will you thank them? Because this was such a gift of love and they spent, I, 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 I'm sure the hours would, if you total them up, would be in the millions of hours to make mm. our church more beautiful. So um, we are so indebted to the four of you, including Winnie, um, for your creativity, for your dedication, for all that you've done to make our church more beautiful. And may I send out an invitation to the next, uh, what would it be, the next generation? Next generation? Mm -hmm. to please step up and have some fun. It's, That's a great it, idea. That's well, a great Aaron. idea. <laughs> <laughs> so there, you've got half the battle right there. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. I don't know. Thank you so much, ladies. This has been really fun. I knew it would be. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. And y'all have a great day. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, guys. Bye, friends. Bye.